Hello everyone, welcome back again to the channel. So another special episode and for the second time, I'm really happy today on the show to have Chris from the Scentland channel. Hello, Chris. Scentland, the land of scent. There <laughs> Love <you>. it. <laughs> the greatest catchphrase, man. Uh, the words that mean you're about to watch a great fragrance video usually. So um, it's the second video that I've done like this with Chris. I'm uh, over here in the southeast of England and Chris is over there in uh, Budapest, right? Exactly right. Yeah. Fantastic. I want, I love, I would love to go there one day, but I've never been. And uh, today it's, it, we did the previous video was one in my series, my most loved scents. Uh, and this one is going to be our favorite eighties scents. I think it's in total going to be a top 10 with five each. And we deliberately, we talked about, should we tell each other which we were picking? So we didn't overlap, but we said, no, let's just see because I bet at least one will be the same. But as we've just been saying before we came on, there are so many great choices from that decade that myself and Chris both love for fragrances that uh, we've. Uh, it's incredible how many I've had to leave out of my list. So Chris, um, great to see you again. Uh, uh, everything okay over there? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as I explained to you before, uh, we, we went live. Uh, mm. COVID unfortunately took, took, took somebody close to the family. And uh, that's always uh, something uh, very, uh, you know, uh, heartbreaking to, to, to witness and, and, and to, um, you know, to, 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 to go through these phases of, of, of people losing their loved ones due to this very wicked i have to say very wicked illness um that is leaving people feeling better and then taking them out um it's it is wicked so um yeah that's the, other than that um fragrances do still uh sort of uh, lighten up my day so that's that's a good thing apart from the family obviously and the kids and you know life yeah. buzzing yeah, you've got two two lovely kids from what I've seen of, of some of your pictures online. So uh, I hope they, yeah. they brighten up life as, as much as possible at the moment for you. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about fragrances from the 80s. Before we do that, yeah. just a, a quick preamble on I know you've made an, a, an announcement today on your channel, which I won't give anything away. But if people I'll link, obviously, Chris's channel Scentland in the description and uh, you check out the latest video. Um, but I think both of us agree that um, Sometimes the the stuff that's going on with the YouTube fragcom uh, isn't always to our taste, and uh, I think now with the very professional channels that we have, of which there are many, and uh, you know I try I try and be professional to to some extent. Uh, You're sometimes, extremely professional. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Likewise, but sometimes uh, it gets a little bit samey. All the content that we get in our feeds at the moment. So, uh, what do you? Obviously, you've been doing the videos for five, six, seven, eight years, maybe more like seven or eight years now. Um, 2014, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, so yeah, going to be, yeah, uh, eight years, so six, seven, seven years. Yeah. What do you get think about how... Yeah, your mats, right? I know, it's not my strong suit, yeah. What do you think about the way things have changed in the uh, the online YouTube fragrance world since you began and, and how things are now? How do you feel about that at the moment? Um, first of all, I, I would like to uh, emphasize that I totally un uh, uh, agree with you in, in regards to the, the, the fact that we have to in evolve and we have to present new things and we have to, to grow and we have to uh, uh, be able to, to change and go into new directions so yeah. when i say that i in the old days i loved i loved uh beta we blood you know crystal maves and and kerosene and, uh -huh. and yeah. robes and people like that that were presenting fragrance reviews so genuinely yeah that got me hooked uh at today that's n that's not something that would be very uh, uh you know um eye-catching because that's it's very basic now mm. as it's but uh, the, the the current days, today's uh, top 10 and top uh, five and whatever, and this and that, the other thing, fragrance reviews are not, are not, are not really um, uh, interesting, uh, in my opinion, anymore, because it's, it's getting tired. The system, it's getting tired of itself. And, and yeah. this is why I think we need to go into new directions. We need to challenge ourselves in order to, to uh, to bring some new creativity to the game, and so this is what I'm thinking about, and um, and this is what I'm working on, and and let's see what happens. 
Okay, great. So we could see some uh, a new direction from you at some point. Maybe so. That could be very intriguing. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I totally agree with you about that. I mean, I've got. I, I don't think there's anything wrong, or it's inevitable that things get a little bit more slick and professional. And people will do the videos that tend to get more views naturally. But I do think when I compare the fragrance world to some of the other genres of my other little hobbies that I watch, there I see maybe some more channels where people are more creative and different and still get loads of views and stuff. But the good, fragrance good people point. seem to, they, they just watch other fragrance videos and go for the easiest option of. Yeah. Oh, most co great compliment getters for spring or whatever. Uh, but you could still get, I think, loads of views and be popular, but be a bit more creative, maybe. But uh, the th the thing, what I want to say is that is that uh, uh, things like top fives and top tens get more attention, obviously. But the, mm. by far, the most attention that I got from any fragrance review is is my tribute review to Carlos, which is a good sign. Actually, yeah, that's true. Very good sign because that shows that there's, there, there's still hope okay there's still people with hearts out there uh, other than numbers in their heads mm. so if you're talking if you're talking stuff like carlos and 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 remembering his legacy and all that if people click in them five or ten times more than in my other views i'm happy for that okay so that's that's a good sign so this is where I think that there, there's still some 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 great uh, grounds to be discovered, and, and 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 let's see what we can do. It's 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 up to us. We invented these things. We are the players, so we need to move ahead and show some new ter uh, discover some and unveil some new uh, territories out there. Yeah, great point. Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed that too. That my video that I made about Carlos, uh, obviously the Brooklyn fragrance lover. If anyone's watching, who, who yeah. we, we sadly lost at the beginning of February, got much many more views than I really expected. And it, I think it proves that people like anything that's from the heart and very real. And uh, so that that could be a lesson to take from that. Okay, let's get into it then. The 1980s, um, <laughs> a great oh. decade for fragrances. Um, Absolutely. I, I think I, 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 you don't look it, but I think you're just a little bit older than me. And the point I'm trying to make here is I was born in Five 19... years. Five well, years. Okay. So that makes a difference because perhaps you're old enough to at least have been coming into your teens and experiencing the world a bit more. Whereas I was born in 1977, so I lived through the 80s, but I had no awareness of fragrances or things like that until probably the 90s. But of course, both of us, the 80s were one of the, the, you know, the formative decade of our lives when we came to know the world mainly, really. And uh, it was just uh, a really interesting time when you look back. Um, loads of things going on in the world and huge changes in politics, technology, culture, the music. And uh, at the time, we didn't realize it, but uh, I was probably, we were looking back to the 60s then as the a great decade that we remembered. But now we look back in the 80s, seems like a, a really wacky, fun decade with great big mobile phones and <laughs> stuff mm -hmm. that seems crazy now, but, but seemed all the rage and very new back then. So uh, we're obviously going to focus on fragrances. Uh, so I'm just going to dive. Well, if you, you want to say anything about the decade in general, culturally, first great but also then if you can tell us your first pick from that decade of a men's fragrance that would be great okay okay yeah in my opinion in my in my case is very um very specific because i lived the, the 80s and on both sides of the iron curtain okay so i i did part of the 80s in germany in west germany okay almost uh, the, the at the border of of the netherlands okay for a good number of years and then i did and the other the other the second half of the 80s in in hungary wow. which belonged uh, to the communist uh, bloc you know behind the iron curtain so i've seen the differences and I've seen the different people and, and and i've seen the change that in 18 89 and 90 what well, the world took uh, on this part so so definitely um I, i've seen a lot of stuff and experienced uh, stuff as well um and looking at the at the fragrances, um, I would start with 1980. 1980 and 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 and, uh, and uh, a gentleman that is, in my opinion, one of the greatest uh, fashion designers of all time, and certainly one of the greatest um, uh, artists and, and 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 people that 
most well spoken and well presented for themselves, let, yet never flashy. Uh, Oscar de la Renta, born in uh, born in the Dominican Republic, and then uh, going on to achieve world success as a as a, as a, as a designer, uh, got his first female fragrance out in, in or woman's fragrance out in 1977, and then in 19. Um, 80. This was the fragrance uh, that uh, that was launched under his uh, name, Oscar de la Renta pour lui, or, or pour lui. I say the Italian way, uh, pour lui, uh, but it's pour lui in, in in the French way, okay, uh, or whatever which way you want to call it. I rank this fragrance extremely highly, and this is a fragrance that he not only created, but he has worn throughout his lifetime himself. So he, he, he really, he was sticking to his own concept and his own trademark and his own signature, okay? And at those times, whenever a, a, a serious designer like Lagerfeld, like Yves Saint Laurent, like Christian Dior, anybody like this was, was launching a fragrance, it was, it, was, it was a major event. It was not, there was no flankers after flankers after flankers. If, Oscar de la Renta launched Pour Lui at the whole world was watching and saying, okay, is he able to live up to his name? Is this, what is this all? Is it, is it really Oscar de la Renta? What is it all about? And this fragrance is tremendously Oscar de la Renta. And uh, it's, it's one of the most well-blended designer fragrances of all times, in my, in my opinion. It, it, has, it has a darkness combined with a freshness, weirdly. It has it has some some uh, uplifting aldehydes and some dirty earthy patchouli floral notes. It's absolutely and a bit a bit of a soapiness is absolutely stunning. So one of my choices, Oscar de la Renta pour lui, 1980, ladies and gentlemen. Very good choice indeed. Yeah, I do have it myself as well. A superb fragrance and yeah, well worth checking out if people, if you haven't tried it out and uh, very affordable now if you buy, pick up the, the modern version. Uh, I, I do see expensive vintage ones going online, but the, the modern one still absolutely brilliant and it just, yeah, really, really cheap fragrance, but really yeah. good. Yeah, there's a difference between there's a made in France and made in USA version. What I found between the, the difference between the two, you had you just have to spray more of the made in USA. That's oh, okay. all. Just give it more hits, you know, just spray yeah. more. And other than that, the quality is, is equal. That's good to hear because a lot of people on my channel in the comments are very obsessed with the vintage and this and that. And But I think uh, quite often, although you're really a fan of, of old school stuff, you do have the modern versions and a lot of them from what I've seen on your channel, you still agree with me that they still hold up well and even though they've changed maybe a bit. Would you agree? Okay. Correct. Oh, okay. Good stuff. All right. And you're right. Yeah, there was there was uh, so f much fewer releases. You're going to find some of these yeah. houses that we mentioned maybe only released one or two fragrances in the whole decade. So different times. Okay. I think mine. I sh I I don't know the year for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's 1980. And I've gone for a really obscure first choice because I thought, can I actually pick something that Chris hasn't got? And I thought I probably can't, but I'm going to try. Uh, so I've gone for Sh Charles I'm Jordan. Excited. Charles wow. Jordan, un homme. And I believe it was a 1980 release. And I just stumbled across it on eBay. I hadn't heard of it as I was just searching through used fragrances. And then I Googled it and it had really good feedback. And I think it came from Slovenia or something, this bottle, you know, somewhere in, in what was Yugoslavia years ago. Uh, and maybe was bought back in, in the 80s, I guess. Um, so Charles Jordan, I believe a French house. And uh, as you can see, it's got one of those real 80s style designs with the, the, uh, the built-in atomizer that we often used to see in the 80s. And looking it up, as I did when I found out it existed, I, I, it's a 30 mil. Uh, it's, a, it's an aromatic fougere, which many people com compare to Arzaro Pour Homme, which was a, a 1978 release. So it would have been very popular in the 80s, but doesn't quite qualify for our video. Uh, and but some people are saying it's a little bit better or a little bit richer or this and that. And also people compare it to the one that I'm, I really want to get one day, but I don't have, which is Patu Pour Homme. Uh, you know, the very expensive one yeah. that you can yeah. really, it's hard to find, right? 
yeah, the prices are a little bit crazy for that. Um, but this one it w was not expensive. So really, really beautiful. Uh, I think we would call it an aromatic fougere. As with Azaro Porom, it's got this soapiness about it, a sort of cleanness and a musky undertone. And this, this lovely, lovely twist of anise, this licorice-esque note and some spices and, and lavender. So it's, it's sort of a barbershop fragrance, but a very rugged one, but also a really smooth, complex, woody, aromatic, masculine, classically French kind of perfumery going on there and, and really, yeah, very much an 80s smell but I really love it and uh, just a really under the radar gem that you might pick up on eBay for a not crazy price, but it's not going to be easy to find. So that's Good. my first one. Back to you, Chris. Very well, very well chosen. And it's, it is, it was a surprise as well. I, I managed to find one that you've not tried. Did I? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Not that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charge uh, Okay. Uh, moving on to the year of 1982 and the house of Aramis. And um, obviously Aramis is a side brand or uh, so, yeah, whatever you call it, uh, of, of uh, the Lauder group, the Estée Lauder group, okay? And um, Estée Lauder herself in 82 decided to dedicate a fragrance to her own husband. So these were the times, imagine that, that, that we have this huge uh, person in terms of, of, of fashion and, and, and art and fragrances, obviously sitting there, Estée Lauder, and she says, or thinks to herself, let, let, me, let me present a fragrance to the market that I dedicate to my husband. Um, and um, that's the fragrance, GHL, Joseph Harold Lauder. Okay, so on the, on the back of the box, it says actually, a distinguished costume blended semi-oriental fragrance created by Estée Lauder for her husband, Joseph, Joseph, um, Harold Lauder. That's the fragrance. Okay. This is the fragrance that, um, or, or the, the, re, uh, the launch or the release or the bottle that has been, uh, reintroduced by Aramis in 2008, I think, uh, as a member of the gentleman's collection line that had Aramis reintroduced, uh, New West, uh, uh, Aramis 900, sorry, Havana, um, GHL, uh, stuff like this, okay? So so this has been reintroduced. So this is a, a fairly modern, uh, uh, the bottle itself, but the juice inside, as you can tell already from the color, I put it this way, yeah, it is this really, um, <laughs> it's so 82 you can't go any more 82 than this uh, <laughs> oh my good god almighty this thing is like you remember um and i i could list you know the list uh, the, the 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 notes like uh, you know carnation and leather and all the aldehydes and and stuff like this but i'd, I'd rather like to refer this to um, it is a it is similar you remember those chairs they're still around the, especially in england in those castles, those chairs with the with the big buttons, the, the leather chairs, the, they were brown and mostly green and brown, and they were very luxurious. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with, with, with the armrests, they were huge. And, and I think, yeah, yeah. This is the feeling that you get from this fragrance, this, this luxurious leather, English leather chair that only a true gentleman well-dressed, well-situated gentleman would ever dare to sit in, okay? So you can't put on this fragrance without being dressed up, at, le at least with a tie, but it's not good enough. You have to, you have to Im be impeccable to wear this fragrance. Wow. So, uh, phew, absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, this is like sitting in one of those chairs in a library, okay? This is how okay. it smells. Big leather chair in a library. This is how it smells. Awesome. I haven't. I. I don't think I've actually tried it, or maybe just once or twice. So you've really made me want to. And that um, again, uh, we we can find that online for a decent price still today, can't we? Yeah. Um, it's interesting because if you know, I don't want to um, make advertisement for anybody, but yeah. on, on Otino, this is on this fragrance, and it is approximately uh, four times the price of Havana or Aramis 900. Right. 
Uh -huh. So this within the line of the gentleman's collection of Aramis that is listing all the good old uh, fragrances of Aramis um, is still expensive for some reason. I don't know, but it, it the performance is absolutely mind blowing. You, you spray mm. two of these and you can you can destroy a, a, a ten story building with the yeah. with the this is incredible. <laughs> All right, I, I now I'm, even if it's not one of the really affordable ones, I'm tempted to go and get them blind by it. And uh, yeah, good, nice choice. Some great ones in that line from Aramis. Uh, yeah. Tuscany was another yeah. good one at the end exactly. of the decade. Yeah. Yeah. A really good one. And uh, I, the, the, you've just reminded me of a point you've often made in your video because nowadays people talk about niche fragrances as being the ones that maybe perform better and you need an eau de parfum version or the x-ray but you always say back in those days normal eau de toilette still was really strong right there you go my bro <laughs> exactly the point if you spray this on or anybody out there and it's an it's an eau de toilette it's actually a custom blended cologne that's what it says okay right, right. on the on the label uh it, it it rocks to no end it, it, like yeah exactly what you're saying i don't add anything to that because you're right exactly mm -hmm. that's the point yeah back in those days a man had never heard of the idea of getting the oh, the parfum flanker or anything like that it was just even if it was an aftershave it, was, it smelled yeah. strong back then it's yeah true. It's true. all right brilliant stuff great choice and uh yeah i like it okay so i guess i'm going to go with the chronological order type thing then which means that my now uh, this is going to be yeah what i've done here and i'm not sure if uh, if we'll overlap but there were a few titans of the decade that i thought i kind of got to put them in you know so um i've gone with uh, the inevitable 1981 release of course chorus from yves saint laurent <laughs> and of course we've all heard of this one but it, it's it's you know it's famous for a reason and i'm very you lucky to special one. you got the special one there because very, that's been, i can i can yeah. I can tell from uh, the box already. Yes, that I'm, I'm very lucky. Yeah, I got the first iteration of, I think it's called the Paris era or something. I was very fortunate to get it on Dan, eBay. Dan, <laughs> get on your knees in front of that fragrance. <laughs> Not now, I, but... I, but. <laughs> I know. I think it was literally unsprayed because you know it's, you spray and it takes a few for it to come out. So it's it's been hopefully sealed and it smells fresh as as the day it was made. And it's just an incredible fragrance, a real powerhouse from Pierre Bourdon, 1981. And I was online, as you mentioned, the, the fragrance releases were a big deal then, and they had a, a lavish party with uh, Rudolf Nureyev, the the ballet dancer, was there. February, sort of February February 1981. There you go. Alan uh, Delon himself was present at that party as well. Oh wow, your favorite yeah. your favorite actor, isn't he? Alan mm -hmm. Delon, the, the legend. Um yeah, yeah. so the, it was a real huge deal the way they, they promoted stuff on there. Was wasn't just a few uh reels on Instagram. It was uh, it was <laughs> it was some big, big lavish do with some incredible people and and the fragrance uh, is is known as a real powerhouse. It's kind of clean and dirty at the same time. Um, it's musky. It's kind of sexy in a kind of dirty, nasty way. But it, there's freshness. There's florals. The note listing is long. There's there's even honey and hints of sweetness. Uh, it's, it's a magnificent powerhouse. And uh, interesting because uh, many people have heard the descriptions of the smell. But the this is supposed to be a little bit similar to I think a chorus is a word for the, the statues, the Greek uh, statues made of this kind of white marble. And um, that I think is, is where this, this name comes from. So absolutely superb fragrance. If you get any version with the sh silver shoulders, most people say they're a little bit more the real deal than today's uh, fragrance. And uh, yeah, of course it was a huge, huge scent in the eighties and still smells great today, I say absolutely agree uh I, I i i had the chance to 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 uh to smell this at the time actually yeah people wore this around me and i now have uh just a mini of the of the, the one that you have yeah uh, all right yeah the, the vintage one um but it's it 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 it, 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 it was something that um that Yves Saint Laurent at the time was inspired by a, a visit to Greece uh, to, to, to create this one. And Yves Saint Laurent was always a fairly wicked person uh, artistically. Mm. And, uh, and, he, and it, this fragrance just shows the, the tremendous bravery that, uh, that people and, and, 
and uh, designers took at the time in order to present something to the market that was just you know uh, jaw dropping and and then make it a lavish party like they done in in Paris in uh, in February 1981 with all these I mean, Nureyev, as you say, and, and Alain Delon and many other uh, celebrities invited. I think Paloma Picasso was there at the, at the uh, uh, launch of that fragrance as well. So, wow, it's not an Instagram. Uh, hello, this is a new fragrance for men. I don't know. I don't know. No. Yeah. It very, well, very, very good choice there. Uh, thank you. I guess it, I, I thought it had to be in, yeah. Okay, so it's back to you for your third choice well uh and I'll, I'll 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 break your concept man i'll just break your concept because uh i am going to um i'm really going to break your concept here because i'm going to ah, do two two fragrances uh <laughs> i'm sorry for that i'm sorry i'll, I'll allow it it's okay yeah uh, thank you thank you very much sir <laughs> uh, <laughs> because these are equally as equally beautiful one uh introduced in this one in 1984 this one in 1985 uh this is enrico coveri pour homme and this is sergio soldano uomo nero which is me which, which means the black one okay and um these fragrances i, I paired them up because because they really represent what the 80s were uh in terms of fragrances in italy Okay, and I have a strong Italian tie. Some for some reason I don't know. I have no Italian uh, family members or anything like. A lot of friends, but but not not uh, family ties. Mm. But st still, I feel strong to 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 the Italian vibe somehow. And this is the mid eighties, uh, to with a tremendous. And in my selection, what I want to highlight with it, which I didn't highlight yet, is that each of these fragrances that I'm presenting to you and to the audience today is still available i didn't want to dig up any or dig into any fragrances that is discontinued because i don't want to show something that people that people are not able to experience and and to to try out and to 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 to, to, to smell and to 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 buy, to purchase okay so these fragrances are all still around you can get them if you want if you're intrigued if you want to try them you know they're there to be to be to be uh you know, purchased so so with um both are in the same lines like and you i can i can still uh, uh list also crizia uomo for example these are fragrances that are green aromatic uh piney um mossy in an italian way so there's always some floral aspects to them there's always some some basil there's always some uh, geranium, carnation, pine, obviously oak moss, but in a way that is not as 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 as, as punchy as as Halston, uh, for example, or or, or Bijan. You know the, the, these extremely heavy hitting patchouli leather fragrances. These have both of them have some Italian flair to them, and. Um, and I choose this one uh, for for the real one, you know, my 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 third introduction. And I'm gonna uh, present the, an unbox unboxing here for you. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th so that's a 50 mil. And the thing is that after all these years, the first time I wore this fragrance was in 1991. Okay. Right. This has been launched in '95 originally. Uh, I first worn this in 1980, uh, 1991. Okay, and it still looks the same. How much Whoa. more tacky so. can yeah yeah let me turn <laughs> yeah. this bottle is and it's plastic. Yeah, it looks <laughs> but I it like look, it, it's really good. <laughs> it, it's it's still out there, still available. It has a white oh, wow. version as well, and it, it is extremely tacky. So yeah. there's nothing high quality about the this yeah. very um tacky uh, uh plastic it, it's like you remember those cars italian cars of the mid 80s lancia uh lancia De lancia delta i think it was called right. lancia, whatever the, they had these incredibly uh tacky dashboards all right. plastic all this type of it's the same thing like and even the but the buttons here you know yeah it's like it's like the italian cars dashboards of the of the 80s and the smell is just especially with sergio soldano um it's incredible it 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 
it does the aromatic green piney mossy smell in a in a truly italian charming way and the, the price versus quality ver uh, ratio is absolutely outstanding because you can get this for 15 bucks and it's it's outperforming any other perform right, of the I'm going to write this down and buy it. That's superb. Uh, so that's Sol Ser Sergio Soldano. Sergio uh, Nero. Soldano. Nero, yeah. Nero, if, okay. If got, it's still available. They kept it. And, and I say, I've used this in 1991, and everything is the same ever since. The box, the bottle, the, the smell, it has not been reformulated. I put my heads on the guillotine for this one <laughs> because it is exactly the same okay so it's it's incredible this fragrance is one of the best uh 80s fragrances and look at this sprayer it's like an atomic bomb bah. and oof, i wish i could sm i wish we could have youtube smelling you know no that would be oh man i haven't bought a fragrance for a few weeks which is kind of rare for me and you've just you've just ruined it now because i'm gonna have to buy that <laughs> if, if that's if so affordable the just to check i'll put the names on the screens too but the the, the other one was um enrico Coveri. uh-huh pour homme enrico, okay. enrico Coveri. this is this has a never heard of it <laughs> Enrico Coveri is a great. Uh, he was a, a great uh, Italian designer in the in the eighties, especially. Um, and you can see this great Art Deco bottle. Now tell me, uh, Lalique, in uh, about five or six years ago, has uh, issued a or relaunched a fragrance in exactly the same bottle, right? Or I, very that's what I thought you'd held up there. Yeah, that's why I'm confused. Yeah, no, no, yeah. No. It's the same uh, Art Deco bottle like Lalique used recently, but this is from, from 1984, okay? Yeah. And it's still out there. This is still available. And again, it costs you probably 20 bucks, okay? This Enrico Coveri pour homme, great lavender, great pine, great herbal, Italian to no yeah. end. Like it's... See, there is so much good stuff that you can have for these prices. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. And thank you. I, I knew you were going to give us some mm -hmm. uh, some ones that people haven't heard of. And I, I mean, this is, apart from watching videos to be entertained or blah -de blah this is what I recommend. If anyone is not subscribed to Chris, this is what I recommend because it's one of the few channels where you really will find something that you think, oh, wow, if you're anything like me, I've never heard of that. I want to go and check that out. I might buy that today. So it's, it's You're going to be blown that. away by Sergio Saldano for sure. I'm, oh, I'm man, I tell you, I've got to have that. I've got to have that now. Okay, I guess it's my turn again. And now I have definitely included a few more um, let's say famous the fragrances but again i thought uh, this had to be it so i've even got the poster on my wall <laughs> from the old 80s advert for chanel Antaeus. so yeah. Antaeus was a i believe a greek god uh who who uh, i think did he have a fight with somebody didn't he and um he was it samson or uh, anyway he fought one of the other gods in some uh, great legend you might know the story and something about Antaeus was that i think he had to have his feet rooted to the ground in order to have his strength and the way that he was i think he lost this fight actually and he was defeated because i forget the other god's name but he lifted him off the floor and suddenly the guy had lost his strength and uh there's a there's a good video by a guy called super Dacob where he relates this story to the actual fragrance having sort of earthy woody tones so it's rooted in the ground and it's a really good video wow. uh, so i recommend that to people but anyhow the fragrance of course 1981 release from the house of chanel jacques Pauge, the father of olivier Pauge, the, the perfumer and of course was the longtime perfumer at chanel absolutely stunning officially i think a, a sheep pro fragrance uh, or woody, I don't know, woody aromatic sheep fragrances. It's not one of our aromatic fougeres. People do sort of compare it in some ways to Koros uh, in that it's something of a powerhouse. And, uh, oh, it's similar to, to that one, you would say. Ah, oh, really? Okay. Actually, and I've heard people compare it to Oscar de la Renta Paul Louis as well. They, they say there's a similarity, but I never, I didn't really agree with that so much. No, um, but anyway, it, it's a very leathery fragrance. There's, there's castorium also in the base. So there's a hint of funk, but if, if you think Koros is a real powerhouse and a masculine fragrance, some people I think have said this is a slightly more refined 
uh, take on that kind of genre. And it certainly has some beautiful fresh notes in the top. Uh, there's a little bit of juniper in there. Again, back those days, you had incredibly long note listings, so I, I can't pretend to remember them all. But you've got leather, you've got patchouli, there's some fresh notes, there's beautiful florals and the jasmine of Chanel. Very, very sophisticated. And uh, just go and check it out. And again, as is a theme for both of us, if you try today's version, in my opinion, it's still beautiful. And if you pick up a vintage bottle, which I'm lucky to have too, they smell great, but I'm, a lot of them have changed a bit in the bottle over 30, yeah. 40 years. So you may not be, it's going to smell different, but that may just be because it's so old. And, it, it, you know, sometimes they don't smell bad, but the, you may have lost some of the vibrancy off the top sometimes. And that, that is a risk. Uh, and I did, they, I, I used to be teaching guitar fairly recently. I was teaching a, an older gentleman in his 70s. And I, this is his signature scent. And I really smelled it on him once just it was a perfect sillage and it actually came across as just a really classy kind of a fresh fragrance and so the powerhouse stereotype of this isn't quite true it's not it was a very amiable likable just that you could wear it to the office i think if you don't over go overboard and it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful and very refined as as everything with chanel tends to be so still a great one from 81, love the bottle design. Yeah. Again, it's that's 80s oh, design. Oh, hang on. The, <laughs> something's gone wrong with that one, but I'll, oh, there, the, you know how the inside of the thing, <laughs> anyway, um, there it is. Faulty lid on that one, but a great fragrance. So uh, Chanel or Antaeus, that's my pick. Back yeah, to and, you, Chris. Uh, beautiful one, and 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 really, um, it shows just Chanel, that Chanel is not a, not a designer. Chanel is Chanel, okay? So, it's it's a it's a standalone uh, scenario there. Um, okay, uh, next year and still I'm stuck in the mid 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 eighties, um, and um, and uh, somebody who is very dear to my heart ever ever was ever since I first got to know him. Uh, obviously not, unfortunately not personally, but but um, in in many other ways, uh, Gianni Versace. And Gianni Versace, um, in his in his entire body of work, is, is one of the most inspirational uh, artists of of the twentieth century, in my opinion. In in his short life that he had, to, uh, that he could live, um, and a part of that are his fragrances. Now we, we know about Dreamer. We know about your you, you love Versus. I love Versus too. Both of them, uh, both Versus and, and and Donatella has has done. A fairly good job to, to 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 try to keep alive some his his his, his uh, Johnny's fragrances. Uh, obviously, Johnny passed away um, in '97, and this has been released. I've seen uh, statements that it has been released in '84 and '86. <laughs> Je ne sais pas, as the, the the French say. I don't know. I think it's '84, and that's the correct uh, um, date. But what I want to clearly say about this fragrance, apart from uh, applauding uh, the, the House of Versace to keep it alive, is that this apart? I don't. I don't want to give anybody a, a, a note breakdown or what what notes are in there or you know what how is it you know what's the what's the blend like which note is sticking out. This is, to me, as it is, it smells like a glorious summer day, sunshiny day in 1980, whatever. In Monte Carlo, that's how it smells. It smells up, upper class, bright, positive, uh, carefree, uh, luxurious, and extremely inviting. It smells like it smells like a <laughs> you're passing by a club in 1984 in Monte Carlo, and and the, and they just opened a bottle of champagne at 7 p.m. in front of the club. You know, you hear the the cork, and, and and you're thinking, shall I go in? I shall go in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go in there. This is how this thing smells again in 1984, not today. In 1984, so it has all the 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 characteristics of the 80s, but it does somehow charm me to no end. It, it smells like, and we know that Gianni Versace himself was a big party guy. You know. 
he loved to party and he had all these marvelous parties uh, at his own house at his own maison and uh this smells like that i could be uh, like somebody in uh, at that party you know so it, it's it's absolutely intriguing and i wear this since uh Again, 1991. First, first time I bought this was in uh, Rimini, Italy, in 1991. Long time. <laughs> well, just because you're that little bit older than me, it's great that you've actually kind of experienced these. Maybe just in the beginning of the 90s, but uh, you you were kind of around to experience when some yeah. of these fragrances were were much more recent releases than they are now. And I, I know that I've there's some great anecdotes that you've told about. Uh, trying some of the these in, in your in your youth back then, uh, which is a lovely, lovely thing. But you, yeah, you've made me want to uh, be in that scenario in Monte Carlo and all, all that stuff. And yeah, it was just uh, a great decade to be alive. There weren't there wasn't so much choice in the fragrances, but as as Chris has yeah. Uh, yeah. well demonstrated, there were some yeah. absolutely great ones and. I perception of how we should smell sorry yeah yeah exactly what i want to say i wasn't there in the 80s in monte carlo unfortunately <laughs> because I was, I was i was too young for that yeah i was in monte carlo like in 2006 but but this mess to me what i imagine this must to me like my if for people uh, on the other side of the of the of the of the big uh, water this smells like miami vice okay this smells like uh, don johnson yeah you know, mm -hmm. With the sleeves rolled up and, and, and you know and and the palm trees and all that shit you oh, know man. this is yeah. miami you know so uh and we know that johnny versace actually lived and died in miami so again another interesting aspect brilliant okay superb choice and again guys uh, you can find a vintage one if you like but there's also a very affordable modern version that, yeah. that you can easily pick up now then th this is a good link uh but it could be controversial because i know that the uh, person behind the next fragrance w did not get along very well with Gianni oh, Versace. No, there is bad, no, there no. is bad blood between these guys, and I think you are very much on the side of Mr. Versace because I, I don't, I don't think you're very fond of uh, Giorgio Armani. But I thought you would forgive me. I don't, I don't know the story behind that, but I, I don't know what went on. But I'll, just on the fragrance alone, I really do like Armani Oporom from 19, I think, 84. So very similar uh, era. And this, uh, I wanted to put it in because I think it smells great. I think I have got the vintage, but I think the modern version is really, really a great reformulation that has a silver top and bottom. And again, you know, you could be safer just to buy that because you don't know what's happened with an old one. Superb fragrance. And we've had some very rugged, uh, mossy fougeres. And this this has some ruggedness, but I, I would say it's leaning towards being a citrus aromatic. So it has exactly. fantastic zesty uh, so, sort of, it's, you know, he's an Italian, American half and half, I guess. But it's a kind of Italian feel to me. Yeah. If you like your Aqua de Palma colonias and things now, you may really enjoy this. Just beautiful citrus, vibrant, you know, the blend of mandarin and bergamot and all these citrus notes. And then again, as with anything from the 80s, you know, it's not just transparent citrus or an aquatic vibe with this one. There's this ruggedness, herbal tones, uh, patchouli, and this 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 air of masculinity underlying in this one. I think it does make it a really, really beautiful choice. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, whenever I spray it, I, I, rem I remember how great it is. But again, some of the kind of tackiness of the 80s is there because it's a very plasticky kind of lid and the, you get these old style sprayers and all that stuff. Like you say, it reminds you of the old the cars or the, the interior of your, your dad's car that you used to sit in and if you wanted to open the window, you had to wind it down. We didn't have any of this electric stuff. We didn't have no power steering. You know, you had to work hard if you wanted to turn your car around back then. And just takes you back to those days. So, but that, but those cars had personality. Okay, this is true. They did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have to upkeep one that way now. But they had more charm than a modern one. Okay, so I know you're not a fan of that that house because of what went on but you seem to your your facial expression suggested you don't mind that scent no 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 uh, uh, uh the 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 thing between Giorgio Armani and, and Gianni Versace was you know at times was not so um, uh not so fair you know but both yeah. were, were probably I think guilty of that uh 
but it was a, it was a, I think it was a healthy rivalry as well. Oh, I right. know that jo that Giorgio Armani was present at Gianni Versace's funeral in Milano in in July in, uh, of ninety seven. So so there was the big bad blood, maybe a lot of media, and probably I took it too seriously as well. So, <laughs> okay. So, so so no no Giorgio Armani is definitely a, a fantastic um, fantastic designer, and and the body of work is amazing. And this fragrance I this is actually the one that you have is the only Giorgio Armani fragrance that. I actually own as well. Okay. I have, and I I, I think uh, equally uh, um, strongly, positively as, as as you do. It's just a, a it's a non plus ultra, uh, luxurious gentleman's fragrance. That that's what it, if if you smell this on anyone, you know that this person is is it's like an Armani suit. There's nothing more beautiful than an Armani suit, because you you instantly recognize the the cuts, the the, the how the, the shoulders are done and all that. You know that it's <laughs> it's an Armani, okay? So with the same same goes with the fragrance. I mean, we know it's it's great, and and long live Giorgio Armani. There's nothing. I think Johnny would say, okay, eh, va bene così. Okay. <laughs> okay. What does that mean? <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. All right. Brilliant. Nice to get a bit of history on that one, and I'm glad you like it too. All right. So have we done four each already? Blimey. Uh, so I think we're over to you for number five. The last, the last one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna turn into a totally different direction and different uh, continent as well, uh, different genre as well. We're going to uh, take a total turn and, and, and look at something fairly unexpected. Because I, I could say, uh, and what I want to say is that kudos to you because um, you listed uh, stuff like uh, Kuros, for example, uh, which, is, which is huge. And I, I, I could go on and say 80s are like Fahrenheit and Ted Lapidus Purom and Boss Number One, which, is, which are all milestones and still out there and 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 and, and, and tremendously brilliant fragrances uh, all of them like ted lapidus poem is so beautiful and and fahrenheit like wow yet um i didn't want to highlight those i wanted to go something that's close to my heart for some reason i don't know what it is but i just love this this fragrance man passion is Elizabeth Taylor, the Hollywood icon, okay, released uh, among those first celebrities. Alain Delon was one of the first, actually. Uh, but Elizabeth Taylor uh, is being recognized as one of the first celebrities releasing her own fragrance line. And in 87, it started with the, with the female version, a woman's version of Passion. And this one, the, the male version, the man's version, was released in 1989, so the last year of the decade. And... Uh, it has this fantastic Art Deco already showing on the box. It's still available. Okay, this is a fresh bottle here. And I have, or the fresh box here, and I have the fresh bottle here as well, okay? It says nothing on the bottle at all. There's no, there's no sign of any written uh, information up there. This is just a pure and art, a pure and simple Art Deco bottle, much like the Chrysler building in New York, okay? New York skyline. Chrysler building. Okay, that's what it reminds me of. Tall, yet it has some delicate lines, some 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 classy lines to it. And this fragrance is just um, where do I, where as is here? It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's it's available for. It's very inexpensive these days. It's still around. Again, I emphasized this before that these fragrances are still around. This fragrance is still around. Okay, and to me. When I smell this fragrance, um, it is 80s, yes, definitely. But it has a combination of lavender, which I love in any man's, man's fragrance, with cinnamon, some fruity notes, and some amber. That is, if I want to calm myself down and ground myself in the biggest times of trouble, to make myself feel grounded and two feet on the ground and comfortable and... and and myself, this is the fragrance I reach for. This is, for some reason, it gives me so such a self self assurance 
that it's it's uh, it's incredible, and the performance and silage and, and longevity are are, are tremendous. Uh, and the, I mean, this lasts me. Uh, okay, I, I overspray. I I admit I overspray, but um, if I do so, if I or if I reapply during the day, uh, it lasts me th throughout the entire day. It's just I don't know. It must be probably my taste. Okay, but this is something that couldn't live without uh, Elizabeth Taylor's passion. And and the most it's interesting actually because the most comments I ever got on my channel on on the Sandland channel throughout the years uh, is that that I'm passionate. Okay, I'm, uh, it's it's what you do is passionate. It comes the passion comes across. So I thought, wow, you know, it's it's somehow a, a unintentional but good match. So it, passion seems to fit to to my approach to passionate approach to fragrances. So that's that's the thing about. This, and, and one more thing about about the fragrance business in, in general uh, it's 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 common knowledge that Elizabeth Taylor with her fragrance line earned more from that business than any of her acting ever okay so so that tells you a little bit about the fragrance business if it runs well it runs good because it fills your pocket yeah that's incredible because I mean she was a huge, huge actress, huge, yeah. one of, and one of the highest paid ever. I think that maybe when she did the film Cleopatra back in the sixties, I, th I think she got the highest paycheck for anyone ever or something. Yeah. I think she, they wanted her to do it, and she didn't want to do it, and she said, "I'll." I think it was something like she said, oh, "I'll do it for a million, thinking that would be the end of it, and she wouldn't have it." And they said, "Okay, fine," or something like that. So she was. What you've said is incredible because I didn't think her fragrances were yeah. that famous i mean they were a sideline i thought but wow you know yeah but isn't it the case that paul newman has also made more money out of his pasta sauce than he did from his film career or something like <laughs> <laughs> that's another matter anyway okay superb choice a great actress going back over many decades but she was big big stuff in the 80s and she was great friends with michael jackson by then wasn't she and she was became very active a little bit more history for people because the whole AIDS thing exploded at the end of the decade and she was very active in, in campaigning to, to help the people who, who were, were uh, suffering from that horrible new disease that came in the 80s. So very, very interesting choice. And I've got that one too. But I've got to admit, it was one of those cheapies that I bought. I sprayed it a few times. Oh, that's nice. And I haven't looked at it much for a while, so now I can revisit. Okay, now you've covered some great under the radar ones, and it looks like the task's fallen to me to put in a few of the big boys. And uh, you've mentioned it, and it ha I thought it had to be in. So of course Fahrenheit from Dior. I think it was and again 18... a vintage one. A vintage yes, artist on the box. <laughs> I got the old yellow. If you get a yellow bit on the bottom, it's the the older formula. And I got a 30 mil, I think it was an 88 release, so right at the end of the decade. And I guess for many people, the memory of smelling it will be very much maybe a 90s smell because it was nearly the end of the decade. But it really ushered in a different era uh, and, and was very different to anything either of us have mentioned. It's not one of these mossy fougeres or piney fragrances. Completely unique avant-garde concept of this fiery thing of Fahrenheit the and it's, um, it's some people say there's a petroleum note in this one uh, we have uh, it's a great violet leaf note in the fragrance it's fiery it's kind of warm it's rich it's hard to I, I don't know what category it is under in terms of woody aromatic it, it doesn't fit into anything that it, it, we had smelled before and it really was a remarkable and, and unique release with a, a unusual kind of bottle design at the time mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but we, we've talked about the 80s as if it's this one thing, but, but believe you me, from 1980, 81, and then coming into 88, 89, fashions had changed a lot. It was a different world. It was, I always think that the 80s kind of broke us from the 20th century era yeah. into the modern world. I, I don't even think of the 90s as being a diff I, I kind of think it's that a modern now because I think it, the world changed really around the end of the 80s. Things had changed, the political stuff, the Berlin Wall fell, all that kind of thing. And we, we, we so this was kind of at that time when everything was changing at the beginning of the 80s, people were still wearing flares and it was that kind of thing. And we were really moving in new directions with, with uh, the world around about the time this came out. Still smells great today, fiery, petroleum, 
different stuff and uh, yeah, a, a unique and artistic creation from Christian Dior Fahrenheit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I, I can't agree more. I, th I think this is one of the most important fragrances of, 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 of modern times, really. Mm. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was groundbreaking. It was, it was, it was um, like Reagan and Gorbachev meeting for the first time. Like uh, mm. it, it was, uh, it was, although I think that was in 85 or 86, I, I seem to remember, but mm. um, this fragrance is, is was something so brave from Christian Dior and 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 so successful as well. It's lasting still uh, to today. And 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 I can I can say the negative version to uh, Christian Dior Fahrenheit of of the new millennium. There is a negative. There's an antichrist <laughs> to to Fahrenheit because what Fahrenheit have done positively. In my opinion, it's solely my opinion, okay? But positively, uh, what Fahrenheit has done to the fragrance market and community, uh, Paco Rabanne, one million in 2008, exactly 20 years later, has done in a negative manner to, to what we're still experiencing today, okay? Many people will cut my head off for that and slash my throat and all that, but it's, it's the whole, the, the appearance, the, 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 they have found with Paco Rabanne one million a a market that is has emerged so a totally new segment of 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 uh, of an audience for a fragrance and 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 Fahrenheit has done the same in a different way. So so you know history repeats itself probably in in another uh, with another coat on or you know, yes yeah. in other circumstances. Yeah, good point. Well, you did, yeah, maybe we'll have to do a 90s video or something. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm actually thinking this video should be, we need to do a part two because as you've been talking, I've, there's so many that I've, we've, neither of us have mentioned that are really good. Uh, Ju yeah. Jules from Dior. <laughs> we both yeah, love yeah, that Jules. one. But, yeah, and I just, I guess it's been a great length for the video. So I'm going to kind of draw us to the end now, but with just a very brief mention because I know both of us love this one. And I, I definitely thought, probably you would include it. Otherwise, I probably would have done so. It's Sport de Paco Rabanne. And it's very, you, you helped me discover it. So The only reason I didn't include it is the, is the principle that I went along that only present fragrances uh, in this video that are still available in the market. Yeah. So, so this didn't make the cut because it's not available and it's discontinued. Good point. I won't dwell on this one too much, but if you are lucky enough to find one, it's a really, again, a lovely bottle, built-in atomizer. And uh, if this is a sports fragrance from the era when sport was played by men with uh, headbands or in wristbands, uh -huh. and uh, it's not like... Johnny, uh, Johnny McEnroe and Bjorn Borg and, and uh, Pat, uh, what, what was his name? Pat Cash? Yeah. Pat Cash, yeah, that's it. Jimmy Connors, uh, Stefan Edberg, <laughs> and Boris Becker. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, Stefan Edberg, yeah, fantastic. And uh, it was released in, of course, 1986. And I vividly don't remember this fragrance, but I vividly remember the wonderful 1986 Mexico World Cup with uh, Maradona. Maradona. It was one of, yeah, that was the. Oh, if, you, if you lived through that, there'll never be a, a World Cup as good as that one again. So great days for sport too, guys. Okay, I think we'll leave it there, Chris. It's been so great to chat to you again and really gr you know, grateful for you to sparing the time. I'm sure the viewers will be, will be really delighted that you've joined me again. We will look out, as I say, people, head on over to Chris's channel. There was an, uh, an important video today, so you might want to check that out. But I, I'm very hopeful that we will be seeing some exciting new things from you in the future, Chris, all right? Absolutely. And I'm, and uh, I'm open and happy to, to do any collaboration with you at any time. So I, I don't can still make you do that. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to hold you to that. All right. That's a good note to turn on. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching. And remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. And goodbye from scent land, the land of scent. The land of sand, baby. <laughs> good night. Bye-bye.